Hello students, in our previous lecture, we solved a problem where we had earliest start, earliest finish, latest start, latest finish. We also found uh, the critical path and we also calculated the total duration to complete the project and also the different types of floats were calculated. Now let us see the definition of all this in detail in comparison to that problem. Now, first of all, we will learn about the network computations. So now here we have the formulas for earliest start, earliest fin, latest finish, lay earliest finish and then latest start. Now, first of all, while drawing the network diagram, you would have remembered there where we calculated the maximum of few values. Okay, when there were more than uh, one uh, activity getting into that event, we had the maximum of the duration, uh, the previous value of E added to the duration. Similarly, uh, for this also, we had the maximum of. So that is why the formula for earliest start is given as the maximum of the previous value of E is earliest start plus the duration. Okay, and then in a similar way and that uh, that kind of calculation is known as forward pass because we calculate it in the forward pass and then after completing the forward calculations, we had the backward pass where we calculated the value of L. So while calculating the value of L in case if there were uh, two activities emanating from an activity, then we will choose the minimum of the two values that is the previous L value minus the duration. So we chose the minimum of it and so therefore the latest finish is given as the minimum of the previous LFJ minus TIJ where TIJ is the duration and these are the previous values uh, okay, uh, of that activity. And then from uh, we uh, and also we calculated the earliest start and earliest finish by using a tabular column. So if you remember in that problem we had earliest finish and latest start okay in this tabular column what did we do for earliest finish it was earliest start plus the duration t and so that was the formula earliest uh, finish is equals earliest start plus the duration and also the latest start was equal to latest finish minus tij so if you remember here latest start is latest finish we will be writing first and then we will be subtracting the uh, duration t to get the values of the latest start so that is the, the these are the four formulas which we used in that problem and so that has been given here and then after this uh, before um, while uh, like like while doing for the network we have found the critical path so for that problem we saw the critical path as 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6. And the duration of that uh, to travel in that path is 25 weeks. Now, here what is that critical path? The definition is given here. The path connecting the first initial node to the very last terminal node. So, what was the first initial node here? It was this one. This was connected to the last terminal node 6 by a path, right? So that is what is said here. The path connecting the first initial node to the very last terminal node of the longest duration. So the duration that we have calculated, the longest duration in any project network is called the critical path. So that is the definition for critical path. So it is the path connecting the first initial node to the terminal node. And that uh, uh, path has the duration which is very longest. So um, terminal node of longest duration in any project is called the critical path. All the activities in any critical path are called as critical activities. So if you see here for this network, the activities were 1 to 2, 2 to 4 and 4 to 6. So all these three activities are critical activities. So that is the definition for critical path. We shall now learn about floats and the types of floats. There are various types of floats, total float, free float, independent float and interference float. Now what is a total float? Total float of an activity is defined as 
the difference between the latest finish and the earliest finish of the activity or it is also the difference between latest start and the latest uh, earliest start of an activity if you see here in this we calculated the total float so i already told you it will be latest start minus the earliest start so that we took and we calculated this or it can also be latest finish minus the layer earliest finish so that is the definition of the formula actually total float of an activity i to j is latest finish minus earliest finish or latest start minus earliest start but what is this total float it is the amount of time by which that particular activity may be delayed without affecting the duration of the project so now here uh, we had the activity 1 to 2 and so this was the total float that we calculated for 1 to 3 the total float was calculated was 8 so this is the amount of time this 8 is the amount of time this 0 8 9 3 all these are the amount of time by which the corresponding activities may be delayed but this will not affect the duration of the project okay so these are the time by which the corresponding activities may be delayed but it will not affect the duration of the uh, duration taken to complete that activity so that is known as the total float so i will read the definition once again it is the amount of time by which that particular activity may be delayed without affecting the duration of the project okay next we have uh, some inferences that is the total float may be positive total float may be negative total float may be zero now in the problem that we dealt with we saw that all the total floats were positive but we had zeros also we didn't have a negative value here but what happens if it is positive negative or zero what do we infer is what we are going to see if the total float is positive then the resources for the activity are more than adequate so it it will be more than what is required uh, so the the resources we have uh, more uh, in adequate the more than the adequate if it is negative the resources for that activity are inadequate it is not enough and if it is zero the resources are just adequate for the activity it is exactly uh, what is needed is what we have we can see that few of the total floats were zero in this problem and few was uh, and, and all the uh, rest of uh, rest uh, and uh, the other were positive we didn't have a negative for this particular problem total float was not negative which means that you know, all the resources were more than the adequate or it was just adequate for the activity the next definition is free float so free float of an activity is that portion of the total float which can be used for rescheduling that activity without affecting the succeeding activity so total flow free float we just calculated here so this will be a portion of this so we can see that always free float will be lesser than the total float because it is a portion of the total float so if we observe all the free floats are lesser than the total float so that is the portion of the total float and it can be used for rescheduling that activity without affecting the succeeding activity so if we want to reschedule this activity we can do it and it will not affect the next activity which is the succeeding activity and the formula for free float is given as total float minus the slack of the head event if you remember i taught you how to calculate the slack of the head event uh, it is l minus e the slack is given by the formula l minus e and if it is for the head event we have to calculate l minus e for these events and if it is for tail event we have to calculate l minus e for the tail events but for a free float we have to calculate for the head event only because the formula is total float minus the slack of the head event so that is what so slack of the head event so l minus e of an event i minus j is called the slack of the head event j if it is for the tail event then l minus it is also l minus e but it will be for the activity i mean uh, this event i for the head event it is j now if it is for the tail event it will be i anyway so now um 
free float is lesser than or equal to total float that also we observed the next definition is for independent float so independent float of an activity is the amount of time by which the activity can be rescheduled without affecting the preceding or the succeeding activities okay of that particular activity and the formula for the independent float is given by free float minus the slack of the tail event so if you remember we calculated the slack of for the tail events and we did that free float minus the slack of the tail event so that is what the independent float is and it is the amount of time by which the activity can be rescheduled without affecting both the preceding as well as the succeeding activities will not be affected after rescheduling it okay so hope you understand this and we we also observed that the independent float is lesser than or equal to, to to the free float and the free float is lesser than or equal to the total float this may appear in one mark questions so next uh, after this we we have the interference float so let us learn about the interference or interfering float this is uh, the float of an activity uh, i minus i to j which is the difference between the total float and the free float so we just uh, solved it for this problem if you remember we had the interfering float where we uh, subtracted the free float from the total float so this uh, tf minus ff was the interfering float so that is what the formula is given here total float of i to j this activity will be uh, is minus the free float of the same activity um so therefore these are the definitions for uh, free float uh, independent float interfering float total float the four types of floats hope you have understood the complete lecture next we will be learning about the pert for uh, for the network uh, problems thank you